Welcome back. In this lesson, I am going to show you how to plan your future system. It's important to understand that the architecture part, what I'm going to show you today, it's the most important part of any system ever created. When you're going to your car and you're driving somewhere, you will always have some place in mind. You will know the route. You will have a GPS that will tell you how to go from point A to point B. You will know also what's involved during the way. If you're crossing borders, you will need to know that you need to have a passport. If you're going through a shuttle, you will need to have something else. So every time that you're taking a, some kind of a drive, you will have the starting point, the end point, and the plan. If you think about it, when you go to the washroom even, you will have a plan, otherwise it will be messy. When you're building CRM, most of the developers will have no plan. They will start just putting some modules one on top of the other, and eventually it's a shit show. This is why 70% of the CRM implementations are failing. And in our company, we have 100% success because we're planning and we're architecting every project before it goes to production. Very important. So I'm giving you a tool that it's priceless and I really recommend you to try and implement what I'm going to show you. Most of the CRMs will start with leads coming in. Then those leads need to be worked on. Then those leads will be converted to opportunities or deals. And then you have the close one or close lost. That's the process of a lead. In this example, I'm going to show you a full lead process and hopefully based on what I'm going to show you, you will be able to design it yourself. Now, if you can't and you're not able to think in this manner, which some people obviously can't, I recommend you to access us or someone else that can help you create those architectures. The architectures I usually will take about four to five meetings. They will cost about $2,500 or so. It's a very difficult process, both for you and your architect, because you need to drill into the details. But whenever this process ends, you will have a beautiful future system. And from that point, you need only to execute. With most of our students, the way that we function with those architectures is there will be some things that they can do because some things obviously the student can do because he knows based on the course. And there will be some things that he will give us to do or because they are too complicated or because they will take too much time for him and for us because we did it so many times, we can do it faster. So the result is it's not that expensive. Okay, so just giving you some things here. Now, when you go and you look at the process, first of all, we are putting on the canvas the lead sources. The lead sources will be for each company will be different. So you have one company that will have, let's say, social ads coming in and some company will not have socials, but they will do a phone calls. So you will have those bubbles and a bubble for each lead source. Once you have all the lead sources in place, those lead sources eventually are going to create a lead in the CRM. This is a very basic architecture. When you're going into difficult architectures, you will also say what happens with each lead that comes in. As an example, whenever a Google Ads lead comes in, which means you will have, uh, let's do something like that, iPhone development. So let's, let's say that you will have this uh, person, he went to uh, Google and he searched for iPhone development and your business is iPhone development. 
it will see a sponsored ad, it will click on it. And now here you will see that you have a UTM and it's those parameters. And those parameters will carry the keyword, the campaign name, all the details that the business wants to track. Whenever we go to the website, you will see that there is a form that they ask us to fill. And the form that we're filling will carry also the details from the form. And in addition, it will also carry the campaign that is on Google Ads and also the keyword. So the bottom line is I will receive in my CRM, I will receive the keyword, the, the campaign name, and all those details, and later on I can create a report that will show me how much money I earn from each campaign, which this is, uh, for me, it's the, the, the main goal. So if I will have here, let's say, the Google Ads, I will also write on the side what will happen when a Google campaign comes in. From the other side, let's assume that you have a referral. Do you want to track the referral? So whenever someone comes as a referral, you will automatically send him an email or a text message and say thank you. Or maybe you will have a task to call him later and say thank you. In some cases, referrals need to be part of the process in bigger deals. Maybe you want the referral to have visibility into the deal so it can help you along the way. So each one of those lead sources, and of course can be hundreds of lead sources, each one of them can have a very specific and unique way to deal with them. But right now, because we are just in, in a basic course, I am teaching you the basics, but just so you know, it can go much, much deeper. Whenever you have those leads, in my case, I am creating them in the CRM, and then I will need to answer a few things. One, who is going to receive the lead? How would be the lead assignment? You might be a one-man show and it will always come to you, so there is no lead assignment. You might have a bigger business with multiple salespeople, and you might have some salesperson that is dealing with North America. One is dealing with Europe. One is dealing with Australia. You might have four salespeople. Each one of them is dealing with a different product or a different brand. So the lead assignment is important because when the lead comes in, it needs to be assigned to the right person. And this person is supposed to be in charge on this specific lead. Next, you have the lead owner notification. How are you going to alert the salesperson? Are you going to send him a click message? Are you going to send him an email, assign a task, send him a text message? There are lots of ways that you can alert the lead owner, but note that you also need to have some kind of an automation that's making sure that, let's say after one hour, to make sure that he actually contacted the lead. And if not, he needs to get another email or maybe then reallocate the lead to a different salesperson. Because the last thing you want is that leads will fall through the cracks. Okay, and that's important. Then you will have the lead notification. The lead notification, it's how your lead, the person that submitted the lead, how he is going to receive a notification that you, re you receive these details. So he will know that you're on top of him. One way that I really recommend for busy businesses, whenever the lead is being received in the CRM, about 15 minutes later, send an automated text message or email that's saying, hey, it's Leo, I received your lead, I'm right now on the phone talking to another client, I will give you a call during the day. And then the person knows that you're on top of him and he will not continue and contact more companies. Okay, so this is, this is a very good trick to grab your lead's attention. Later on, we'll talk about blueprints and we have also a full course uh, about blueprints. But the idea is that people will not do whatever they want in the CRM. Everything in the CRM will be based on buttons. 
and I will show you obviously later on how it looks like. But the idea here is whenever a new lead is being created, I will offer the lead only three options. One, it's a garbage lead. All the SEO leads, the web development, the Viagra, all the crap that is just wasting your time. Those will be considered as garbage lead and when you click on them, they're gone. We also have a, an extension that we call it keep it a, a spam. Whenever a lead comes and you mark it as spam, this lead will be basically gone. And now if future leads coming with the same phone number and the same email of the spammer, they will automatically will be redirected to the spam folder. So you won't need to see them anymore. And it saves lots of time filtering those garbage leads. Okay. I will also have in the description, I will have a link to this specific extension. Another option that you might take is that you try to call this person and he's actually answering. And in this case, you will click on call answered. And obviously, if you have a, a blueprint, which I will teach you later, you will see that the blueprint can ask questions. So if I click on call answered, it can ask, okay, so what is your first name? What is your last name? What is your email? What are you interested in? And based on that, you can qualify your lead. So basically all the qualifying questions will be here. And the beautiful thing about it is that every salesperson will ask the same questions. So you're creating a unified way to deal with your leads. It's very important. And the third option, you try to call the person and he did not answer. And if he didn't answer, then you can go and send automatically an email to him, a text message, schedule the next follow-up to make sure that your agent, your salesperson is actually working on the lead. It's beautiful. So all that can be done with Zoho CRM using a blueprint. We usually like to take this lead process. You see, this is the entire lead process. We like after the lead process to start the deal process. Now, the lead process, it's relatively simple because the lead process have the same, almost the same structure from one company to another. We have a, a, a leads blueprint extension, basically that's with the blueprint and the follow-up system and it's doing all that. I, I will also have it in the description. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the leads blueprint is almost identical from one company to another because dealing with a lead is almost the same. The idea of the lead is just getting the person on the phone and qualifying. That's it. The rest is just trying to reach him. Try to call him once, twice, three times, four times. It's just trying to call and make sure that the agent is actually not dropping the ball on the lead. For the deal process, it's not the same. The deal is completely different from one company to another, even though they're from the same business, same size, same geographic location, the deal process will look completely different. So it's difficult for me to show you a deal process that is common. I can show you a deal process that we have for our Medi CRM, which are it's a, our medical a, our medical CRM, and you will see that this is a much more mature and complicated process but you can see here for example that you have the opportunity was created basically here there was a conversion uh, where is the conversion yeah here so there was a conversion and from the conversion an opportunity started and then we're booking a sales appointment and then the sales appointment conducted or maybe didn't conduct. And then we need to book again another meeting and it's becoming very difficult. Okay, so the, the deal process is more heavier. If you want to start probably the, the leads process, it's, a, it's a, a, an easier way to start. The one that I just drafted for you, it's relatively easier to deal with it. Whenever you're, you're trying to architect your system, 
You can do it with the Lucy.app, they have free accounts. You can do it with Draw.io. Um, it's draw.io, okay? And both of those tools can provide you a good interface to have those pieces. You basically just drag and drop those pieces to the canvas and you write the name of the transition. Before you create your CRM, you will need to have an understanding of how your lead sources looks like, how your lead process looks like, how the deals are looking like, and without that, you can't really proceed because you will have no system. And if you don't know how to do it or based on this, again, I, I, it took me years to, 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 to learn how to architect properly. So I can't really teach you in, in, in a course how to architect. Because you need to have the knowledge from the Zoho side and also your business side. So it's, it's a little bit more difficult to teach. I would recommend you with whatever tools that you have and whatever you, knowledge that you have, try to draft your, your system on a canvas. And if it, even if it's not that good, it's, not, it's, it's okay. Don't worry. Just use what you have and start to plan your, your, your future system show it to your business partner, your employees, share it with more people, make sure that there is a buy-in and they like what they see. And based on that, you can start to develop your system. So uh, that's a very, very important part of the game. Okay, 70% of CRMs will fail versus 100% success when you're doing architecture. Okay, the numbers are absolutely in favor to create an architecture. I know it's difficult, but it will be a crucial part to start. Thank you for watching the lesson. If you'd like to know more about us, we are Amazing Business Results. We are a Zoho Premium Partner and we offer a few services. One service will be Custom Zoho Development. That means that you're coming with your own business problems and we'll find the right Zoho solutions for your needs. We also develop extensions. Those extensions will be applications that we created that are plug and play to your Zoho system. And each one of, of those extensions will solve a specific business problems for units. We are also a Ring Central reseller, which means we can sell you the Ring Central system, which is a phone and text message system. And because you're buying it from us, we'll give you the license to use our extension for free for one year.